señor, si lo tuviera, ¿usted cree que no lo iba yo a dar ya? Me estoy muriendo de la angustia, yo se lo daría, se lo juro que le daría yo ese millón. Un millón de dólares o Diego está muerto. Like this one in Mexico, thousands of kidnaps for ransom take place around the world each year. Ruining lives, wrecking families, and generating billions of dollars for criminals. But the profile of kidnapped victims in certain places is changing, and kidnapping has also created a growing industry, one which saves the lives of victims. I was on a dirt road just like this in Mexico. I was going to go spearfishing, and that's when the guys pulled up in front of me with the truck, slammed on their brakes, and jumped out with a gun and uh, pulled me into their truck and kidnapped me. They wanted a certain amount. They weren't going to take lower. And if it was lower, I was dead. In 2012, Shane Anderson moved to Mexico where he was kidnapped. The country is a hotspot for the crime. The scariest moment was when they had me go stand on the edge of steep hill where there was garbage at the bottom and he lifted the gun up right at me. And he just said, I'm sorry, it's, it's too late. We have to kill you. Kidnap for Ransom works like a market. The victim is the commodity, the kidnapper and the family the traders. Both parties have to come to an agreement to exchange the goods. I think I've kidnapped for ransom as the trickiest trader in the world. You are in a trading situation with somebody you have no reason to trust. It mostly occurs in areas where there are civil wars and where governments are in conflict with cartels, terrorists and other armed groups. A large number of multinational companies and NGOs operate in kidnapping hotspots and so employers take out kidnap for ransom insurance to protect their employees. What you get is a promise to reimburse a ransom. With it comes the services of a crisis response company that will help you make that trade succeed. More than 75% of Fortune 500 companies have K&R insurance policies, and they work. Around 98% of insured criminal kidnapping victims are safely retrieved. The people who are insured should not know that they are insured and how much they are insured for. They might give this information to their kidnapper and therefore change their kidnapper's expectation of where the hostage negotiation is likely to settle. Paying out large ransoms can make hostage-taking a more lucrative and attractive crime. So rather than a multinational company front the bill, the families of the victims have to come up with what they can to begin the negotiations. This controls the ransom demand from the outset and regulates the transaction. Once the ransom is paid, the family is reimbursed. K&R Insurance comes with a crisis response team that can include a negotiator. I believe I have been involved in 121 cases. Negotiators can bring the initial ransom demand down by 10% and limit violence towards the victim. You have to build trust with the bad guys through time, through credibility and money. It was instrumental for me having a hostage negotiator because they have local knowledge. You can have all the money in the world, but if you don't have that knowledge, you're not going to survive. When they finally decided to let me free, after the last ransom payment, we caught a bus and went to a bigger town where I could catch a taxi. It wasn't until I knocked on the door of my friend's house where I knew my wife was that they knew that I had survived. Foreign kidnaps like Shane's, however, only make up a small proportion of kidnap victims worldwide. But today, in Mexico, the profile of kidnap victims has changed in recent years. 
When kidnapping began, the victims were mostly well-known and wealthy. Kidnappings were targeted. It wasn't a coincidence. They had information. They knew where they lived, the cars, bank accounts. I mean, they, they, they did their homework previously. But today, kidnapping is a crime which mostly affects local middle-class people, taken out of the blue and for less money. A quick fix for criminals. These victims will most likely not have K&R insurance. In Mexico, kidnapping has come from the millionaires to the rich, to the middle class, to people with really modest resources. We started having random cases. Wrong place, wrong time. This is partly because criminal gangs in Mexico have fragmented, so there is more competition for the drug trade. And kidnapping people is another way to make money. But another worrying reason is that the Mexican government has been largely unsuccessful in reducing kidnapping. Only an estimated 1% of all kidnappers are captured and brought to justice. It's easy to get away with, so criminals have no reason to stop doing it.